Good morning. Thank you very much for the opportunity to come and present my work uh, that uh, I have done as part of my DPhil and where I focus in maternal antibodies and neurodevelopmental disorders. So, as we know, during pregnancy, the mother transfers to the fetus IgG antibodies, which, of course, is beneficial for the neonate. But if the mother is in circulation pathogenic antibodies, these can lead to disease. And there are many such examples. The neonatal hemolytic diseases, neonatal myasthenia gravis, to mention just a few. What is important to note is that because we now know the role of these antibodies, we can treat and even prevent these diseases. So with this in mind, my question has been, can maternal antibodies to fetal CNS proteins cause neurodevelopmental disorders? So now we know that there are diseases caused by autoantibodies. Uh, they're rare diseases. Patients present with a wide range of neurological and psychiatric manifestations, and they respond to immunotherapies. So here we have a few examples. Probably the one you're most likely to recognize is the NMDA receptor encephalitis, but there are many other targets. And we usually detect them using a live cell-based assay where we transfect live cells with our protein of interest. We incubate them with the patient's serum or CSF, and we detect the binding with immunofluorescence. So here, in this talk, I will focus on this protein, Casper 2 Casper 2 is a protein that is part of the voltage-gated potassium channel complex, and it is a very important protein during neurodevelopment, and this has been demonstrated in vitro and in vivo. Patients with mutations and deletions in this uh, uh, gene have uh, a wide range of neurodevelopmental disorders, such as autism or intellectual disability. So we wanted to assess whether Casper II antibodies were present in the sera of mothers of children with neurodevelopmental disorders. And to do this, we established a collaboration with the Danish Biobank, because there they have a fantastic collection of gestational uh, serum collected in the 90s. And because in Denmark, each individual has an identification number, we can link the, the results of the screening of the maternal serum with the diagnosis of the offspring uh, in the registers. And what we found was that Casper II antibodies were present uh, in mothers of children with neurodevelopmental disorders. And if you look here at the table, you can see that Casper II antibodies were nearly five times more frequent in mothers of children with mental retardation disorders of psychological development than in control mothers. So these antibodies are there, but are they causing the disease? To assess this, we exposed time-mated dams to purified IgG from patients with Casper II encephalitis and healthy controls. We did this from gestational day 12 to 18, and then we assessed whether there had been an efficient transfer of the antibodies. We assessed the behavior outcomes during the neonatal period and the adult period of the offspring, and we did neuropathological studies at termination. So when we looked at the presence of antibodies in the, in the end of gestation, we clearly found that Casper II antibodies were transferred from the maternal circulation to the fetal circulation, and it is perhaps not uh, uh, unexpected that when we do uh, tissue staining from, uh, from, from the fetal brain, we also see human IgG in the vessels. But what is different here is that in the Casper II IgG exposed group, we see this human IgG staining uh, beyond the vessels diffusely in the parenchyma, <coughs> suggesting that here the human IgG is binding to proteins in the tissue. So what are the consequences of this exposure? Uh, we looked at the neonates, and there were no gross morphological abnormalities between the groups. And when we tested them on, in a wide uh, battery of tests to assess neurodevelopmental outcomes, there were no differences. But when we tested them again at, uh, during the adult's life, at month four to 10, what we saw, and we've run a series of behavioral tests, but this is the most striking finding, was that the Casper II IgG uh, mice here in black, in two different paradigms of social interaction, these two tests, they would spend less time in social activities, uh, less time interacting with another mouse, and more time spending in non-social activities like grooming and digging. So 
It's important to note here that these mice had been exposed many months before, so it seems that this exposure led to permanent deficits. So we wanted to see whether there, were, there had been permanent changes in their uh, neuropathology. And what we saw here in the somatosensory cortex was that there was a, a, a slight decrease in the number of <coughs> neurons in, in neuronal densities in the upper layers of the cortex. And when we quantified uh, Cux1 positive neurons, which is a marker of the upper layer neurons, uh, we see that Casper 2 IgG exposed mice had more of these neurons in the deeper layers, perhaps suggesting that some of the neurons had not reached their final uh, uh, place in the, in the structure of the cortex. So next we look at another cell population, microglia. Microglia are the resident immune cells of the brain. They're dynamic cells that uh, respond to brain injury or disease, and now it is known that they're crucial players in normal brain development, particularly in the processes of synaptic refinement and elimination. And what we found was a striking increase in activated microglia in a Casper 2 IgG exposed <coughs> mice throughout all, the cortex, uh, throughout all the cortical layers in the medial prefrontal cortex and the somatosensory cortex. To add to this, when we looked at quantifying glutamatergic synapses, we saw again a loss of glutamatergic synapses in Casper 2 IgG exposed mice in the same cortical areas. So our findings uh, support this model in which mothers of children with neurodevelopmental disorders have circulating antibodies, in this case Casper 2 antibodies, that when they reach uh, the fetus during gestation can lead to long-term behavior abnormalities and long-term histological abnormalities. Of course, there are still many questions to answer that I, I'm addressing now. Um, what are the mechanisms of antibody injury during the pre period of uh, gestation? What is the role of Casper II in this process of microglia-induced synaptic pruning? What about other neuronal targets? From our, from our cohorts, we had samples that were, that were binding to yet unknown antigenic targets. And can we develop any therapeutic strategies to prevent the passage of the IgG antibodies to the fetus? So with this, I'd like to acknowledge all the people that have helped me throughout these years, in particular my supervisors, <coughs> Professors Angela Vincent and Paul Harrison, and Dr. David Manasa, who did a lot with me on the histology quantification. Thank you. <laughs>